Hey, this is Art Jonak, and I'm here with Sarah Rockin' Robbins and Oren Woodward, and we're going to take you down the journey of Sarah's adventure from going to being a kindergarten teacher to becoming the top earner in her network marketing company, which isn't a small company, it's a really big company. So Sarah, thanks for being here. Oren, thank you. I'm going to start with, you know, kind of the question that I think most people would ask. You're a kindergarten teacher working with children on a kindergarten salary. What on earth made you believe that you could earn millions of dollars as an entrepreneur? The truth is, I never believed that was possible. I never envisioned it for mm -hmm. myself. Um, you know, when I was first offered my opportunity, I actually said no. Mm -hmm. I was busy. I knew nothing about network marketing except for the fact that I said I would never, ever, ever do it. I'm formerly shy. I don't like to claim that about myself today, but you know, I was afraid to talk to people. So how in the world did I end up in this business of networking and being successful at that? Isn't that interesting? So as you're watching, take notes. Maybe the person who says no can become a yes. And maybe the person you're talking to has no interest in millions of dollars. Maybe something different is of interest. So what did catch your interest when you looked at it again, maybe? You know, it was interesting because it was my mom. Her name is Chris. She yeah. said to me, She's awesome. <laughs> Sarah, she is awesome. She said to me, Sarah, we are doing this. You are doing okay. this. I was facing the loss of my job due to Michigan's economy. Mm. You know what happened to the automotive industry. Yeah. So families were moving, schools were closing. I was facing the loss of my job. At that point, it was about a need. I needed to earn mm. X amount of dollars every single month to be able to survive. My husband's business was a landscape construction business. Again, in the economy, you know, feast or famine nature. Right. Um, so we were at one point paying bills out of a quarter jar. I had like 19 cents in our bank account. Wow. And so we needed something. Mm -hmm. I was taking college credits. I was doing all these things. I didn't have time to take on another job. Right. And so I looked and I thought, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. The opportunity for extra income. Sure, why right. not? Start a part time. I, if you don't mind me asking, how much did you need to make it worth your while? I remember crying, asking how I would ever make three thousand dollars a month okay. doing this. That that was the kind of that magic number. That was so three thousand dollars. So before we go out there and showing the hundred thousand a month and the twenty-two million dollars a second, let's tone it back down and say maybe if we share it enough, where we say here's how you make five hundred, here's how you make two thousand, here's how you make three thousand, maybe you'll attract a few Rock and Robins to your team. Yeah. Uh, because if I came to you at that point and said, no, it's about making 100000 a month, what would have been your I wouldn't response? have believed you. No. I would have thought, that's a scam. That can't be true. And I would have probably ran the other way. Ran the other way. So your mom is your sponsor. Yes. Yeah. So how cool is that? You, she gets to work together with her. You know, it's family yeah. business. So you had to make it happen. What made you believe that it could happen in network marketing? Uh, hearing the stories of yeah. other people in network marketing who achieved, reading their stories, hearing them speak at your right. event, you know, and having them share their testimonials. For me, it was seeing that other people did, and right. so therefore I could. My mom and I didn't really have anybody to follow initially in our company because it was the two of us right. and two people actually on our corporate team, and that was it. Wow. And so we were looking at each other going, what do we do next? You know, it was really interesting. And, um, you know, as I started to see the growth, I'll never forget one month where my check was a few thousand dollars, went up to over 11,000 a month, and I thought, this has got to be a joke. It's fake. I said to my husband, like, do we cash this check or like hide it? I'm not quite sure, you know? <laughs> and we watched, you know, things grow from there, and I thought, man, this really does work. But you know, it's interesting still. I mean, again, you talk about belief, believing mm -hmm. it was real, and could I, and was this going to continue on? Right. I remember literally um, with my teaching job saying to the principal, you know what, I'm going to take a one-year leave of absence. You know, I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back, you know. So you head it out. And, <laughs> um, and, and I love teaching. So for anybody listening, you know, that's yes. very important to say. However, uh, even if I wanted to go back, that school ended up shutting down. Mm -hmm. um, so you talk about timing, mm -hmm. you know, perfect timing. Yeah. So one of the things I know is that as a teacher, you've transcended the, that skill, being able to communicate clearly, simply, which we have to do with children. Yeah. Um, and you've done that very well in your network marketing business. So that's a skill that you had coming in. What's a skill that you, specifically in leadership, that you realize, oh my gosh, I need to get better at this. I need to change this about me in order to take this business to another level. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, I, I invested more time, I think, into my personal development than I did 
my professional development. Mm -hmm. So by professional development, you know, I'd be on all the calls at the meetings, right. events, etc. But then I really thought, how am I going to be successful in a business of networking if I'm afraid to talk to people? Mm -hmm. And so I was literally buying books, listening to, you know, trainings, right. and learning how to become better at just simply making friends. And I remember approaching somebody for the first time at a cosmetics counter, and my hands were shaking and my knees were knocking, I almost dropped a bottle of skincare. So for the first time in my life, I saw stars, you can see stars, it's true. <laughs> the girl looked at me like a deer in headlights. I literally was just panicked. I went to my car, I called my mom and I cried, and I said, do I go back there? You know, and I told her what happened. She goes, don't go back there. Get out of there. <laughs> so I literally cried, pedal to the metal the whole way home. And I wondered, how will I ever be successful in this business of networking if I'm afraid to talk to people? Mm. Wow. Orin, from this, mm. what you've heard so far of her journey, what do you take out of that well, from a leadership perspective? Sarah is the classic reluctant leader. It, she has amazing talents, amazing ability to connect with people, and yet she was the one selling herself short. Mm -hmm. And so it was her mom's encouragement to get her started. I think of how many people that they lose the race because they never entered the race. They say, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't win there. So if you don't enter, you, you lose 100% of the races you won't enter. Mm -hmm. And so your mom's encouragement to get you started, here comes this reluctant leader. And now that, well, I'm, I'm in, I guess I should start running. And uh, you start th going through this process and having to make this first contact and to the point of almost passing out. Oh yeah. Make, mm -hmm. I mean, this, these, this is exactly what leadership's about. It's not about being good to get started. It's being willing to go, put one foot in front of the other, and every time you run across an obstacle, be willing to face that Goliath and overcome it. And yeah. so Sarah is a true overcomer mm. because by her mom's encouragement, she got started in the race. And now to have built one of the largest communities, one of the largest organizations, from, from starting from fearing, seeing stars to contact, that is, this is a true network marketing success story. Yeah. Thank you. So, Sarah, you mentioned in the beginning, well, gosh, I need $3,000 just to make it worth my while. Mm -hmm. And that's a big number. Most people say 500. And then we went to, oh, I got an $11,000 check. By the way, what did you do once you got that check and you were like, oh my gosh. I waited to cash it. You I thought for waited. sure that it was a mistake. I thought we gotta wait to see if this you know, continues to still <laughs> happen. And it did, and it grew, but I just couldn't believe it. I mean, mm -hmm. to me, imagine, again, a beginning teacher's salary. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, yeah, That's you know, three months of salary yeah, right there. Yeah, it was a big one deal. one check that you're holding. A big and deal. by the way, this really shows you Sarah's heart, because I was joking around earlier that most people, if they have an $11,000 check and they think it's more than they should get, they're <laughs> running to the bank and they're trying to put it in there before they catch the yeah. mistake. So Sarah's like, oh my gosh, I think it's wrong. And she called and said, maybe it should be less. Yeah. And I really appreciate that about you. So between the $3,000 uh, and the $11,000, or even between the you know the, the one hundred or the first check and the $11,000, did that just happen because you, you were lucky? You were there in the very beginning. There was no work and a company put everybody under you. Well, how'd that go? How'd that happen? Man, no that would work? be so much easier. <laughs> no, I mean, I really got out and I did the work. I told you I did the, the per personal development, but then was out doing the activity. In my part-time hours, I was very purposeful. I was mm. very prepared. I was on the phone calling new people. I was following up with people. In my spare time, when I had vacation time, I was traveling to some of these markets with the leaders doing events. And we literally worked so hard that first year so I would be able to then retire. Mm. And the traveling was miles in the car? Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is the this is where the leadership really, you know, you've got the CDs in and you're oh, yeah. listening and you're it's the late nights and you're thinking, is this gonna be worth it? At what point did you say, This is working? Um How when I got to trade then? in that car, by the way, let me just tell you yeah. that car was a two door cavalier um, that the doors <coughs> froze shut. So in Michigan winters, I used to have to climb in through the trunk, literally. I'd have to wow. go in through the trunk to get into my car and I'd go to these meetings, right? I mean, it was really interesting. But um, no, when I started to see consistent growth okay. and, and I, for me, I did not, and I always recommend this, you, you don't leave a job until you're consistently mm. making far more than you were earning yeah. and you see it for a decent period of time. That was a whole school year of working part-time but seeing the growth every single mm -hmm. month. So we were at a place where my husband and I, we mutually, we had the conversation, we said, you know, great decision, you know, let's take some time, let's see how this goes, right. and was able to pour more time in. 
between the time you signed in to the as a distributor and when you said I can really live off of this, how long of a period of time was that? Definitely throughout that first year. So about you know? a year. Yeah. So you put in a year before you said, Okay, I can I can live off this. It wasn't an extraordinary lifestyle, but it right. was it replaced the kindergarten For salary. Sure. Yeah. And how long did it take between replacing kindergarten salary and a lifestyle of wow, I'm very comfortable now. Well, that depends on what's very comfortable, yeah, that is true. right? <laughs> I mean, I honestly was comfortable when I was matching my teaching income. Mm. Do you know, it's, it's interesting because Bill and I, my husband, we've been married 10 years and we just bought what we consider to be the home of our dreams three years ago. Mm. So we lived way below our means. We used to actually joke and be like, if anybody Zillow.com to me <laughs> and my old house, right? And they were to say, this is the top leader right. of this company. We just didn't feel the need to compete with yes. anybody. And if anything, we just wanted to be very wise about saving and investing and making sure that we weren't getting ahead of ourselves. My decision to buy my first pair of nice shoes was like, oh, the anxiety, yes. you know? And I think I just really had, still have that really conservative mindset. And, you know, as you're watching this, to me, that's a very healthy mindset to actually be frugal enough to know hey, uh, this is working, but an entrepreneur journey can be up, it can be down, There's, you never know the future, and, right. and putting it away. Um, you know, at a mastermind event, Lauren Woodward talked about the 10 laws of financial discipline. I don't know if you remember that, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, did, did that have an impact on that thinking, or did you already have that impact, that, that kind of thinking with Phil? Absolutely, and I, and I did. I've had so many mentors yeah. just share with me, you know, be careful, save, Good. invest, you know, live on a small percentage. And I think that's just wisdom, yes. you know, all around. And so we waited until we were at a really good place that we said, mm -hmm. you know what, we have, you know, saved. We're, you know, we're, we're ready for this next step right. in our life. It's not stressful. I didn't get into this to be more stressed financially. Right. I mean, I got into this to be less stressed yes. financially. And so I think that that's really, you know, good perspective for people to keep in mind. The moment you get the check, it's not time to spend it. It's yes. time to save it and, and be wise with and it. And is this what you teach your team? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Now, that may not be the norm inside the profession. There are certainly organizations that teach that. I know, Oren, you teach that, and Sarah, mm -hmm. you teach that. I'm a big believer of that. But I've certainly also seen, and in my past in network marketing, where the leader says, you got to check, upgrade your car so you can look the part. You got to check, upgrade your house, you know. And to us, in the, with perspective now, that's kind of not the best advice. So as you're watching this and you're hearing that advice, I'm not saying disregard what your upline is telling you, but certainly we're telling you not what to think, but what to think about. Yeah. Or on what you've heard here on the financial discipline and so forth, what does that tell you about it? Uh, again, Sarah's can. done such a great job with keeping her focus on her duties before her dreams. Mm. When you got started, it wasn't, man, I want to live in this big house and some of the things that you have today. It was, I got to make 3000 a month because I don't want to keep raiding the cookie jar, mm -hmm. so to speak, and, and the money jar. And so, uh, because you had uh, the focus on, I've got to go earn some money for my family. And that helped you face those early fears. Where if you said, oh, you could live in this house, you're not materially motivated. Right. So having this big dream to have a 10,000 square foot house, so to speak, that wouldn't have got you out the door to go see stars a few no. more times until you got comfortable mm -hmm. with it. So it's very important to understand what is it that truly motivates you, what drives you, what will get you out the door. And then, if you... Listen to what Sarah said. She realized she had to invest in herself. And so many people there, they, you see failure a couple different ways. Some people will invest in themselves. They'll read the books. They'll listen to CDs and personal development. But then they won't get into action mode. And I don't care. You can be educated and still broke if you don't apply. You don't really know something until you start applying it. So one of the things I appreciate about your story is you read, listened, associated, but then you went into action. You invested in your business by getting out the door, uh, driving the miles, sharing with new people, and I'm sure today you aren't seeing stars anymore right? <laughs> uh, because you mastered your craft. You went from uh, new and formerly shy yeah. to where today now you can speak, and I've seen you speak in front of thousands of people and just uh, be able to communicate at a level that very few people can. That isn't where you started, that's where you've journeyed to through progressing step by step.
What other challenges or what's another challenge in leadership that you ran across? Was there a challenge like when you sponsor somebody, can I actually help them? Um, was there a, a other challenges that you ran across within the organization? At what point did you say, oh my gosh, I need to learn this as well? Mm -hmm. There's been so many of that, you mm -hmm. know, that feeling of taking responsibility for people's success or failure. Right. And I since learned I'm not ultimately responsible for their success or failure, but I am responsible to get them off to a great start. Mm -hmm. You know, setting goals at them, teaching them how to achieve them, being available for their income producing activity, right. but they have to make the decision. They have to show up to work just like I did, even when I didn't know what I was doing and when I was shy and when I was afraid. So that certainly is a big piece. Another one too was um, time management mm -hmm. as well. I used to, um, I, one of my mentors, uh, you know, Christy, as he sounds fast, but he would say to me, you need to establish hours of operation. Well, why? And I would do calls at all sorts of random times, right. and then I started to feel like, well, wait a minute, you know, I have no rhyme or reason or schedule, and that's not how business owners run a business. Right. They have hours that they're open and closed and time with their family. And when I set hours of operation, times that I was truly available for my team, mm -hmm. That helped out a lot as well, and it allowed me to enjoy the journey too. And would you recommend a brand new person does that from the beginning, or once you started to develop a team? From the very beginning, so, I believe I had schedule a schedule time. Yeah, yeah, girl on my team. Her name is Stacy. Mm -hmm. uh, she joined with very part time hours. Uh, she was a military spouse. Was starting a sixty hour a week job herself. Right. Two hour right. train commute. Uh, two young children under wow. the age of five. So you want to talk about busy yeah, no kidding. and she she moved i think within her first year because the military six times mm. so you i mean again busy that's the definition of busy but she said to me sarah i have one hour a day nine o'clock at night to ten o'clock at night mm. i'll do exactly what you tell me to do you know the income producing activity we will do the prospecting calls right. but i i just i need to be able to fit it in during that time and she set that time and she told her team this is when I'm doing calls, taking calls. This is when I'm doing my prospecting calls. It was amazing. She rose to the top ranks in our plan within her first year. Is definitely earning a career income. Was able to fire her boss at her 90 day review. So she's no longer at the 60 hour a week job with the two hour mm -hmm. everyday train commute. And she's home with her little kids. And she's living a life that she truly loves. But from the very beginning, she was planned and purposeful with those hours that she had. It's easy to feel like feel like we're working the business. Right. I've been working all day on this because I've been sitting and scrolling on Facebook or refreshing my downline report, right? Well, when you have you know, I'm on my back office. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on here? But when you truly say, okay, I'm working my business an hour every day, who did I call? Who did I follow up mm. with? It causes you to be a little bit more accountable yes. and real with yourself. So she knew the day before what she was going to do with that hour. Right, that was, that was exactly. Intentional. Uh, going back one step on the, you know, as a kindergarten teacher, you certainly would have felt a responsibility for the children to move up a grade, yeah. to go from this grade to the next grade. But in this business, it's a little bit different, right? We don't have, we, we can't force them to move up a rank. Mm -hmm. How did you make that shift in thinking? Um, being more interested in what people's goals were from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. I used to say to people, well, these are my goals for you. Let's get you to this level right. and it's top Just level like in kids. leadership, <laughs> right? This is what we're going to do and nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they're disappointed that they disappointed you and you're feeling lousy because why didn't they get there? And all of a sudden you feel really responsible. Have I let them down? Mm -hmm. And I started asking people when they join novel idea, what is your, what are your goals? Right. You know, and I'll share with you how to get to a fast start and all those things. So don't get me wrong. There's still a point in the discussion for that. But I'd say, what are some of your goals? Mm. You know, your first 90 days in the business, your first month, you know, what would be important to you? Is it to earn your return on investment, right. have a little extra money, donate to this cause, whatever the case may be. And I had a gentleman say to me, I just want to tell you right now, my only goal in doing this is to earn $50 a month extra to take my wife on a nice dinner. Nice. And I know everybody's saying, oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's you know, <laughs> but the thing is, was he said, I don't want to be pushed further than that. Now, mm -hmm. could you imagine if I was like, let's get you to the top ranks of leadership, mm -hmm. go yes. for it. And I'm pushing him in a way that he doesn't want to be pushed. He'd probably get pretty turned off. So it was interesting when I started really digging in and finding what, out what their motivation was, what their goals were, everything changed. And how quickly did you able to make that shift? Was that, did it take a month, two months, three months before you realized, oh, I better change this? 
probably was, you know, within my first year, and I'm still learning and growing, it, growing in that no, area. No, I ask because I think one of the leadership is to how quickly do we notice this pattern, yeah. and or, you know, based on that, I know you've got to. Oh yeah, that's like, like yeah. that. Let me tell you <laughs> and Sarah said a couple things, and it just brought back a quote. One of my favorite quotes is: "Many times leaders are throwing life jackets when God's attempting to teach people how to swim." Yeah. He wants to get people on the deep end sometimes, a little bit outside their comfort zone, and so that they can learn to swim. And if a leader gets overprotective, they start throwing life jackets. And, um, and so it's important to recognize first, identify, what does the person want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. It's not your dream. They're not, they're not going to get in your business for your dream. You find out what their dream is, so identify. Then expect. Now, this is what you said. I, I love in leadership that a leader helps people hold the bar on what they said they wanted. Mm -hmm. Not hold the bar on what we want for them. And, and Once we know what they said they want, and we say, here's what it's going to take. Do you want that? Yes. Then you can expect, now, uh, Sarah, this is what you said you wanted. This is what it's going to take. And then you can help them inspect. So identify what it is, expect, inspect and you follow that process mm -hmm. what's what you know from moving from a uh, kindergarten teacher and just like hey everybody's moving to the first grade to where it's like you know what i gotta find out what it is they want mm -hmm. and then help them get it and that you're modeling that and that's why your organization is growing at the rate it is because you come in and say you tell me what you want and i'll give you the process and the plan to get mm -hmm. there yeah it's important as you're going along your journey zero, $50 a month, 300, 3,000, 11,000, then earning more in a month than you did in a year. But what was the closest you ever came to actually just calling it quits? <laughs> the um, CEO of my company says lovingly that I quit more than anybody else in the company. <laughs> so I have many, I mean, honestly, okay. many. I, I, I truly do believe that I said I would quit more than anybody else, but I really lacked belief in myself mm -hmm. was this possible for me but I remember uh, one time just taking a walk in a neighborhood as I was babysitting mm -hmm. and calling up one of our friends and just saying I don't think that I can do this anymore in fact I remember walking through this neighborhood just moderately priced homes going mm -hmm. this will never be my life I'm never gonna be able to have this for myself and you know it's like you get tired of the emotional roller coaster right. somebody says yes you're up they say no you're down you know, you get two people on your team, somebody quits, well, that's half your team. I quit too, I'm right. done. You know, we've, we've all been that same place. We've had to face those same disappointments. It's really how we respond right. to them. And she said, oftentimes, you know, your, your breakthrough comes at the place of your greatest resistance. And she's like, I'm just going to challenge you to not quit, to keep on. So who did you have one specific person you called whenever you had that? I just don't know if I can keep doing this, or was it different people that? It was my mom a lot, poor mom. thing. Yeah, she, <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, she really. I mean, she has earned everything that she has uh, achieved in the business. Because really, I mean, it was. Yeah, I even thought of you know when you were saying I would call my mom and say, okay, what do I? I, I would literally even with the opportunity, I'd call her and be like, say it again. What do I say? Say it again. Right. Say it again. Say it again. You know, I mean, having that support is very important so that's why I encourage even on our team they have an accountability partner you know who's mm -hmm. not a counselor who's not sometimes even their sponsor but somebody that they can just bounce ideas off of right. or go to for encouragement that's you know? good so in the moments that you were thinking about quitting what kept you going other than the phone call to your mom was it just the phone call or were yeah. you driven by something different my reason why which yeah. was to start a foundation for women and children that I would fund through my network marketing business now. So you knew that when you were a kindergarten teacher? Is this oh, a dream yeah. you had back then? It's a dream that okay. I've always had. Wow. And Phil wanted to, oh, well, he wants to yeah. start a camp for kids someday. <coughs> right. And, you know, we both have different things that we want to do with it. Now, at times, instead of serving as a motivator, it actually demotivated me because I, I had somebody say to me one time, you know, what will it cost to start this? And I said, millions. And she said, how does that feel? I said, I'm totally overwhelmed. Right. She said, so when somebody says, no, it's easy to walk away, isn't it? And I said, yeah. She gave me great advice. She said, I want you to break down just literally a portion of your paycheck every month, put it into a bank account, and do something nice for a child in need. Because that was my heart, it was children. Yeah. And so sent kids to fine arts camp, uh, built a handicap ramp, took care of medical bills. Mm. And as um, my income grew, so did the impact that I was able to, to make. 
And now being, instead of dream, being driven by those disappointments and the feelings of defeat, I was being driven by my dream. It was something tangible that I could see. And we recently opened up, you know, an orphanage for a hundred little boys in India. I know I have 117 sons and, um, there's nothing like seeing your reason why in action, but it wasn't a reality then, right? I had to build up to it and it took, you know, a good deal of time. That's a great piece of advice. Start now on your yeah, goal. Don't just wait. Start, just help one child and then, yeah, and then when, that fed your belief yeah. that that can do more. It's funny when people will say, you know, comment on a Facebook post maybe and say, well, if I was do, making what you're making or if I was successful sure. as you were, then I would do it too. And mm-hmm. I thought, we all start somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, look at small ways that we can volunteer our time, small ways that we can give and make an impact. And now all of a sudden we're emotionally connected to our dream. It's becoming a reality for That's us. That's powerful. And you've got it all girls. Yeah. Yeah. This month. This month. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, we're excited. So you know, one of the things that you know that I think is powerful is to say reward yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. As you grow and you check grows, you know, say if I do this, I'm going to reward myself. But what I'm also hearing here is that you can reward yourself, but you could also give to what your calling is, yeah. even on a small scale, to build that momentum. Yeah that you're seeking to get to the point where you can have a hundred children yeah. at a time and another hundred children at a time. And not everybody's India and orphans, no. you know, to be clear, some people just to have a shameless shoe fund and yeah. to go pick out that yeah. favorite pair of time. shoes <laughs> without guilt. And so that's why I think it's so important that every individual sits down and says, what is my reason? Why? Mm-hmm. What is my purpose? Why am I doing this? If time and money were no object, what would my life look like? Right. What would some extra time and extra income mean for me and my family? And start writing down some of those things and then saying, okay, how can I break this into bite-sized goal? What what mm. can I do toward this today that's going to move me closer to, right. to that reason why? It's almost like it's harder to quit when you've got your purpose mat, you know, attached to your mm-hmm. check, whatever size it is. Yeah, and because now if I quit, I'm quitting on those kids and, those and I'm kids. quitting on my dream yes. and it's i'm quitting on my team you know yeah. it just helps you to reframe everything that's powerful Warren, what's your take on I, i've learned something new <laughs> um with sarah i didn't realize how much one of the biggest things you had to overcome was your self-talk oh yeah in other words like it wasn't it's like the skills and the talent were there but the way you were speaking to yourself was selling yourself short and not allowing you to really enter the the field of of where you could play not only play but be a star in that game and so um like i talked about in my book resolved where learning to turn down that negative voice you in your brain you've got two voices running all the time you've got this negative voice that's saying sarah you can't do that and and even if it worked for some what would make you think it could work for you and even if it worked you couldn't possibly fund that orphanage you couldn't possibly do this and if that voice, if you start listening to that voice too much, now you got that one blaring in this positive voice that says, hey, you can do this. Hey, it's just day by day, just a little bit of progress every day. And all of a sudden, you're not hearing that voice anymore, and that's when you quit. And I love that. You said, I quit more than anybody else. Yeah. But right at that moment, right at that moment where you're ready to, to listen to that negative voice, you either saw it upline or went for that walk, and started saying, well, now wait a minute. And then you went back and started hearing to that positive mm-hmm. voice, what, what can I do? Look at what I'd be giving up if I do quit. Yeah. And then you went into talking about feeding your purpose. You see, it's like you got this big dream, but if you start feeding it on a daily basis, what you're doing is you're going and you're turning up the knob mm-hmm. of that voice that I can. Look at this, look what I did. I, this week or this month, I was able to put this amount away for my purpose, for my dream. And so as you start to feed that dream, you're turning up the positive knob and turning down the negative. You're never going to get that negative to totally go away, but it's going to get so quiet, you can't hear it because you're too busy and too focused on feeding your purpose. Yeah. How's that feel? Amazing. It feels amazing. Yeah. I, can feel, I mean, I, I hope you can feel it through the, through the video. Um, you know, Sarah, in the beginning, you mentioned that you had to borrow the belief from other people's stories. And one of the reasons I have asked you here is that I want to get your story down. Of course, we've got leadership teaching moments from it, but we never know who might watch this mm-hmm. and get that belief from your story. Amen. So I appreciate you know, that. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of a full circle moment. Um, if you were to summarize your leadership philosophy into a word or a sentence or a couple of sentences, what would it be? For me, it's all about generosity and giving. You know, 
I believe a gift isn't a gift until you give it away. And a lot of times people follow me on social media, whatever the case may be, and I share the things that I'm doing, and people say, give so much value, you know, yes, and you do. why? And I just say, I love what I do, and that's the teacher in me. Yes. I believe you can't outgive God. I believe that you can't give too much. And reciprocity, what you give is always what ends up coming back to you as well. And so just, you know, with my husband and I, with the resources and time that we've been given, we're always looking for ways that we can give and bless people. But in our business, too, I've never operated in, well, who's on this level of my pay and, you know, how our pay plan works from the very beginning. One team, one mission, right? Uh Changing a lot of lives together. And so really, it's open calls, open events, whatever I have, you're welcome to plug into. Mm -hmm. And it served us really well. It's a great philosophy. You know, you don't hoard your knowledge, you share your knowledge. That's right. You've written the book. You said, hey, here it is. Use it as you want. You post on Facebook. And maybe you're watching this and Facebook doesn't exist anymore. We don't know how technology <laughs> goes. But a platform where you're able to give your gifts. One thing that I get clearly from you, Sarah, is that you give out of love, not motive. Yeah. You know, you give to give, not to for a specific motive. And it's served you very well. So if you're looking for evidence that you feel that in your heart, no, I really, I want to give and I want to contribute and I hope that it comes back to me. We have a great example here of where that is the case. And you can borrow from that belief if you're that kind of person to give to give rather than to give for motive. Um, the Sarah can demonstrate that for you. If somebody's watching right now and they're saying, you know, I'm the kindergarten teacher or I'm the fill in the blank or I've, you know, I've, I've got to commute two hours and one way on a train and you know my back's against the wall I want a better life for myself I want a better life for my children I want to be able to contribute they're watching they've got a tear in their eye they, it's, it, it's in the heart they're like oh gosh if I, if I could just have you know one percent of what Sarah has my life would be different they want to take that journey they want to go and become a leader inside their company inside a, as an entrepreneur what would you give them as advice first to say yes really to say yes the life of their dreams and I always say I can do anything for a short period of time Mm. to produce the long-term rewards that I desire and that my family deserves and so I would just honestly take it day by day most people do this part-time most people that's the majority of my team they start very part-time and then be purposeful with the time that you have plan out your day who am I going to be calling who am I going to be following up with what you know leaders or new people will I be coaching have a plan So you look at this business and you say, it can happen. Yes. I've done it. Yes. You've helped many people do it. Your organization is extraordinary, filled with amazing leaders. Yes, it is. You say, plan your time, schedule it, do the activity, do it consistently, give along the way. Daily activity, give it the time that it takes. I talk about, I lost 65 pounds total and counting. He said, it didn't happen overnight. It actually took me 10 years. Can you believe I didn't do any like overnight program? It took me 10 years and it was every single day. What am I eating? How much am I exercising? All of those great things. Well, my business has taken me eight years and counting daily activity every single day, making the calls and follow-ups, but giving it the long-term time that it takes to success doesn't happen overnight. So your journey is your journey. And I remember you shared your weight loss journey at the mastermind. She doesn't sell weight loss products. She was just giving the example of Here's, you know, that it took 10 years, but I got there. And you got to, uh, you know, 3,000 a month in a year, which is pretty fast by a lot of standards. Um, But some people might take two years, some people might take three years. It's their journey, it's your journey. So don't, you know, compare, just believe in what Sarah said. Follow the pattern, you know, believe in it, set aside the time, and you can get there. I saw on um, a a quote on Instagram from Ms. Stone of Twitter who said, Timing, perseverance, and 10 years of trying will eventually make you look like an overnight success, <laughs> which is true, right? Yes, People are like, true. what is the magic formula? How did you do it? Yeah. I worked really hard over the past eight years, every single day. And she committed to her mother. She committed to her company. Yeah. She committed to herself, to her team. Sarah's been with the same company since, since day one. Eight years, she's mm-hmm. had an amazing track record, great run. And I think that's part of your, your success is that you have, you know, you are a person of your word. Mm-hmm. You said, here it is, here's what we're doing. Yeah. And you're here with Phil, you know, we're at, at Oren's house and, 
And I can just, I'm so impressed with your giving generosity, oh. with, with who you've become. And I can't wait to see where you're going to go. Like, you know, my daughter's here and she's always like, so what's Sarah doing now? And she follows you on Facebook and you inspire. Um, so I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Know, you. For, for doing that. Just, you know, there's no success without sacrifice or major success without mm -hmm. sacrifice. Uh, was the sacrifice, the journey, you know, the first year, the second year, the quitting, uh, is that worth it? short-term exchange for long-term reward and yeah. like I said there is nothing like seeing your reason why in action I was sharing with you over lunch today that um, my dad um, who also does the business with my mom um, in his 50s you won't mind me saying you know this business has just transformed their life mm -hmm. and to hear him in that place used to be a CFO of a large cardiology practice yeah. worked so hard to provide for a family and um, but would just be exhausted every day and fall asleep right. on the couch Mm. And to hear him say, like, I'm finally just loving my life and living my life. And he said, I'm finally dreaming again. Wow. That's worth it. That's worth it. And, you know, it's interesting, too, because sometimes I think I hear leaders get in that place, well, I'm making so-and-so successful or blah, blah, blah. We really take time and think about the blessing that we're able to give people, mm. not only when we offer them the opportunity, the people who are maybe in our, you know, upline support system, right, right. that we're able to really um, – contribute toward change, they, they changing their life. Done, yeah. What an amazing thing at the end of the day to be able to say, look at all the lives that are changed yes. as a result of one vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, and a group of people who are working really hard together, individual purposes, right. but all for the purpose of changing a lot of lives. It's pretty amazing. What an amazing perspective on it. Because yeah. we, we certainly have heard of people saying, well, if I keep working hard, my upline will make more money and I don't get along with them. No. You know what? It's a blessing both ways. You're That's gonna right. help your team. You're gonna help yourself. You're gonna help your line of sponsorship. You're gonna help the people that you're interested in. I love your giving nature. Thanks, uh, Orin, I'm gonna turn it to you and say, how do you summarize this <laughs> amazing journey? Very tough to summarize <laughs> all of these great points in a couple minutes, but I would say Sarah represents. She's a model of the biblical truth. You reap what you sow. When you got started, before you got started. You listened to a voice that was filled with lies, that, that negative voice, that, that untruth mm -hmm. that pours into all of us. And when you listened to that, because you were listening to that truth, you were not able to fulfill the potential that God had placed inside of you. And then through the craziest chain of events and getting started and uh, starting to work your network marketing company, starting to plug in, starting to hear some truth through uh, listening to CDs and reading books and associating with other people that were speaking more truth to them. You, um, you seized that information and ma made it your own and slowly but surely started turning down that negative voice. And now because you had the courage to start listening to truth, turning up that positive radio in your, in your mind, now you're living that truth and even better, you're sharing that truth with the next generation. You're able to, because you're a living testament to you reap what you sow, you are now through this video and through your amazing business, able to pay that forward mm -hmm. into the next person's life. So I salute your leadership, Thank very you. proud of you. And that's one of the greatest gifts, honestly, that network marketing has provided us is how we've grown. My husband, Phil and I have said, you know, when we have children to be able to speak truth into them and mm -hmm. tell them you can do this, Amen. you can do this and to speak life into them and to now speak life into our yeah. team and to speak truth into them and pull out people's purpose. I mean, that it, it, it's so incredible. And if I had to say what is the most impactful thing that I've taken away from all of this, it's not the money and it's not the trips and not any of those things. It's how we've grown, but now the legacy Amen. that we're able to leave with other people, there's nothing else like it. And no other journey that I know of besides this that could literally teach you all of that in right. eight years. It's like pressing a fast forward button on life. It's pretty amazing. It is amazing. And some people will still say eight years. That's just too long. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, <laughs> what were we doing eight years ago? <laughs> so uh, Sarah, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for being here with us. Thank you for contributing because here we are sitting with totally different companies. We've sat down and we said, you know what? Let's give back to the to the profession, to the people, to the ideology, to all of this that's blessed us and you're willing to share your story with who knows who might be watching around the world and who you might inspire or and you're also always pouring back into people. Yes, I appreciate you. you both. So you can do this. 
You need to believe that. And your adventure, your journey begins now. Mm -hmm.